Steve Schofield on the far side, Mark Loram on the inside. In the middle, Simon Wig right alongside Joe Screen. They break. Scoey makes a good start, but it's Mark Loram who makes a really good start. Mark Loram rushes away from him. They come round towards us. Somebody has a little bit of a moment in there. It's Scoey, I think. And uh, round the outside comes Simon Wig, and Simon Wig takes on Mark Loram, and it's Simon Wig ahead of Mark Loram with Steve Schofield in third place and Joe Screen back in fourth place. So we have a race on our hands. Mark Loram is not dismayed, but he's having to give way a little bit now. Still Steve Schofield in third. Joe Screen in fourth, Richard Musson in fifth, followed by Stuart Williams just behind him. So Simon Wick there, keen to make up for Jonathan Sims, Gary Lobb, and Trevor Banks. And Trevor closest to us as we look across to the far side of the field, and it's Andy Riley on the outside, uh, closest to boards on the far side. Going through in 8th place. Let's run through those numbers again. They read 14, 54, 7, 86, 135, 131, 71 and 18. Two more races to go then in the final qualifying legs for the solos. Race 24 coming up with Jeremy Doncaster going against Marvin Cox, Phil Ashcroft, Martin Hagen, Peter Lloyd, Rob Camden, Darren Matthews and Alan Farmer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, I must say, if this does prove to be Martin Hagen's uh, last outing on the British grass track scene, uh, we will lose a very uh, good sportsman indeed. A very fine competitor all over the world. He has a tremendous record, well respected. And I'm sure he takes all our good wishes into the world of sidecar motocross. But uh, I, for one, will miss seeing him on the grass. Well, that's the results stand at the moment. We've got Mark Lorham on 74, Joe Screen on 71, Simon Wig on 72. So those look to be the leading three. Well, they break. They go down the back straight now. We're looking for Marvin Costa packs his lead, Jeremy Doncaster in second place, Martin Hagen in third, Peter Lloyd in fourth, then Phil Ashcroft. <laughs> so, Marvin Cox then. Now then, Jeremy Doncaster really needs to So is Marvin Cox then, leading from Jeremy Doncaster. Oh, and Hagen in trouble. Hagen in trouble and pulls out. So it's Marvin Cox then from Jeremy Doncaster as we look across to the far side. Marvin Cox, Jeremy Doncaster in second place. In third place now is Peter Lloyd. In fourth place it's Phil Ashcroft. In fifth place it's Alan Farmer. And in sixth place, uh, looking anxiously down, number 22, Darren Matthews. So victory down, looking to be uh, sure for Marvin Cox as he comes up to the final down. Marvin Cox to the win. Jeremy Doncaster in second place. Peter Lloyd in third. In fourth place is Alan Farmer, who comes through just ahead of Phil Ashcroft. And then <laughs> Darren Matthews having all sorts of troubles getting off that bed. John Walmsley and Colin Earl, and Paul Fry and Tony Forward and Colin White and John Boston are the competitors. Looks a fairly open race. Will James, of course, uh, had to drop out of his previous outing with uh, problems just out here. We never did work out exactly what was wrong, but uh, everything seemed to lock up for him and he stopped. Oh, Will James is out there, so uh, he's got his problem sorted. And uh, he did have two wasp framed uh, machines this morning. They break. They get down the back straight. Second, Paul Fry in third. They reverse that, so it's Paul Fry in second place. Will James in third as we look across the far side, and Clayton Williams. to give up. There's Clayton Williams from Paul Fry, from Will James, from John Walmsley tucked in there, and behind him, Colin Earl. Uh, Will James goes for second place, inches past uh, Paul Fry, loses it again as he gets Paul Fry now pushed hard by Will James. Still John Walmsley behind him and then Colin Earl. Meanwhile then, on the far side is Clayton Williams from Paul Fry and John Boston in trouble. What an unhappy year, John. Clayton Williams who wins, Paul Fry in second place, Will James in third, 
And that was very close. It looked to me unofficially as though Colin Earl had just got uh, through there in fourth place. We'll wait for the official verdict on the rest of them. Replacement to, for Andy Sugg is Ben Heath and John Bukit. They take the ride of Andy Sugg. <laughs> <laughs> Race 26 it is then. Uh, I've been told that there's no Shane Baker who's got a blown gearbox, but we get underway. Of course, a lot of eyes will be on Richard Pickett and Martin Bailey as they go into that first bend. It is Richard Pickett and Martin Bailey in the lead.
the line up. This is, of course, the last race of the qualifying rides. We're now looking for the top aggregate scorers to go through in the semi-finals. One more race to go then, and we see coming to the line in grid one, Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. Grid two is Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock. Grid three, Nick Promola, Chris Fires. Robbie Wilson's out there rustling, and John Hiscock. And as they get underway, it is John Hiscock that's made a tremendous start into that first corner. Rustling goes after him and follows him around that first bend. Jerry Adams has got up in the third at the moment. from John in this race as he goes into that pit bend holding off rustling and Paul Urich Jerry Adams still up there in third Mike Cameron holding fourth Robbie Wilson looking for the outside line as he's reverted back to a traditional grass track outfit interesting to see if he does go for those white lines but John is still just up So rustling anxiously watching to see where John Hiscock's going. He knows that he can push him wide coming out of this bend. Again, rustling looks for that inside line. Goes to go around the outside of him. Looking for the outside line on this top bend. So John Hiscock hugging it tight. Rustling has gone wide. Looks to come back underneath him going down that back. So he's in front of the advantage. As he looks into that pit bend for an opening once again. But John Hiscock running a brilliant ride. He really is hugging the flags on that bottom bend. There's no way round for rustling. Oh, Jerry Adams still up there in third place. As we watch them go down that back straight with one more to the complete. This is a for rustling because he really doesn't look to be motoring like he was earlier on this afternoon. As we see the checkered flag come out, it's John Hiscock that's going to take it. John Hiscock can chain up and get a win. Rustling and Paul Urich gets second. Jerry Adams and Sean Pittard get third. And there was Mike Cameron that crossed the line in fourth place. Riders are out on the line for race 29. Mark Loram versus Joseph Screen versus Steve Schofield versus Martin Hagen versus Andy Riley with Clayton Williams, Peter Lloyd and Colin White. Here we go, they break. It's another nice clean start. Mark Loram makes the gate. It's Loram who leads. Clayton Williams was still again. Looks like he could get pushed back and forth, but it's Mark Loram who leads from Joseph Screen in second place. And so, uh, slotted through comes Clayton Williams, riding a marvellous corner as Clayton Williams went through to second, drops back to fourth again, and it's Steve Schofield that goes through to second. Mark Lawrence from Steve Schofield from Joe Screen, and then Clayton Williams out in trouble, and then Martin Edison on the top of his last ride in the British Grand Prix. In trouble, trying to be there. Meanwhile, and it's Mark Lawrence on his way. Joe Screen in second place, Steve Schofield is third, and Clayton Williams in fourth, and Andy Riley, and then all the way back, Peter Lloyd, and then we've got number 31, Colin White. So, Mark Lawrence then ahead of him, leading Joe Screen on the far side. Well, we said that Mark Lawrence would be rebel to the circuit, and he certainly is flying along. So, it's Mark Lawrence then who leads as they go to the last lap. Joe Screen in second place, then Steve Schofield in third, then Clayton Williams in fourth, and Andy Riley in fifth. In the sixth place is Peter Lloyd, and behind him, number 31, Colin White. Well, Mark Lawrence has certainly managed to work the magic on this one. He got a super start, he got away from Joe Screen, and it's Mark Lawrence who wins. Joe Screen in second place. In third place, Steve Schofield. In fourth place, it's going to be Clayton Williams. I shall win for Clayton across the line. Then Andy Riley. Then number four, Peter Lloyd. Then number 31, Colin White. So Mark Lawrence then notches up another 10 points, takes him up to 84. It's very, very close. Roger Mesa and Richard Piggott, of course, on 49. Rustling on 45. Steve Jewison on 38 and Ken Lane on 36. In the sidecar cast, there's still 14 available for a win in the semi and a win in the final. So, still wide open. As we look to that uh, start line for the first semi-final, remember of course that uh, Roger Mesa has had four wins so far this afternoon, which uh, of course uh, was added to that total from the first round and putting him top of the points chart. But they're ready for the first semi-final as we see the starter is happy with them. 
the revs start to go, but no, somebody pushing the tape. Mark Edwards' hand I can see up in the air, so Ken Lane not quite happy with uh, what's going on on the start line, but they come back into line, the revs go up, and away we go with the first of the semi-finals for the sidecars. Roger Meester has made a brilliant start from the inside. Rob Cameron goes after him. Ken Lane has gone in there as well. He slots in the second place, rustling a four year into court in the middle of three riders. racing in these very, very hot conditions. No, come Well, looking across the far side, I can see you. Uh, on the inside there, it looks like Richard Musson. Well, I would have expected Rob Fortune to be there, but uh, there we are. Up goes the gate, they're away. Now then, across to the far side, Wiggy is almost out of our sight. Wiggy is about to be pushed as he goes around that bend. Wiggy, I think, is uh, battling away there, and it's Jeremy Doncaster, and, and Jeremy Doncaster on the inside, Wig on the outside, and they're having a tremendous battle here. And Simon Wig and Jeremy Doncaster hard at it, and Jeremy Doncaster lost a meter or two, but he's got another three laps. There's something about that, and Simon Wig is very the time that we've seen uh, with so many great grass track events. The Simon Wiggs from Jeremy Doncaster, from Marvin Cox, from Trevor Banks, as we look across the far side, and Richard Musson up there in contention as well. So, Simon Wiggs then, has the battle for that first half lap. Now he's established himself out in front of Jeremy Doncaster in second place. So, Simon Wiggs then, leads into the last lap. Jeremy Doncaster still in second place, Marvin Cox in third, Trevor Banks in fourth, then Richard Muston, then Will James. Well, certainly this is the Simon Wig of old, isn't it? Really flying along here. Gaping superbly, really powering around the bend. Well, then Will James wins the second semi-final. Jerry Doncaster in second, Marvin Cox in third, then Richard Mushin, then Trevor Banks, then Will James, then Peter Lloyd, and then Paul Fry. 
Kaikazen, how they line up. We've got Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey in grid one on 49 points at the moment. In grid two, Steve Jerson and Keith Wall. It's great to see them going in the semi-final. In grid three, Martin Baker and Shane Can. In grid four, Ivor Matthews and Mike Dowles. Grid five, Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock. And grid six, right on the outside, Alan and John Blewett. That's how the six line up for the second semi-final. They all know exactly what happened in the first semi. They will, of course, be looking to equal the points scored in that first semi. All of them, I feel sure, have got somebody working away in the pits knowing what is necessary. But, of course, at the moment, most of those riders will be looking for this big seven points from the semi-final. <laughs> Looking to that start line, they're all in line, the revs start to go, the tapes go up and away we go for the second semi-final of this year's Masters competition as we go into that first corner, it's Martin Baker and Alan and John Blewett, they're together. So Richard Piggott has missed the start completely, he's got Steve Jewison in front of him as well. And uh, I think the way this will be worked out is that the highest point scorer will get the first choice of positions on the grid and on down through the point scored. But after that, the points mean nothing. These, this is a straight race with Andy Riley, Clayton Williams, Paul Fry, Will James, Peter Lloyd, Colin White, Richard Musson and Rob Fortune. <laughs> Well, when we... Uh, here we go then, Andy Riley on the far side making good start, but uh, powering down there looks like Richard Musson coming past a lot of them. So Richard Musson probably that Clayton Williams coming around the outside, but who's going to come out in front? It's Richard Musson in front, Clayton Williams right there with him, and a tremendous three-way battle going on with Will James heading it for third place, and Rob Fortune just coming by to take third place. So then it's Richard Musson from Clayton Williams.
Well, race 34 did so and indeed classified as the final, the consolation final almost for the 1991 British Masters Championship and as we look to race 34 it is Gary Jackson on the line in uh, effectively the first choice of positions on the line. Rob Cameron joins them, Ivor Matthews lines up, Jerry Adams, Rob Wilson and number six on the line is Alan and John Blewett. So six very competent national class runners going in this B final. Already all six of them are out there. The starter seems quite happy with them. No, there's a hand gun in the air. Everybody's happy. Away we go this time. As they come by us for the first time, it's Gary Jackson has made a tremendous start. Ivan Matthews is up there as well. Rob Cameron trying to find a way through on the inside. Going into that first bend, uh, losing that outfit on the bottom corner. And as we look to that start line, just Rob Cameron to come into line. Sean Pittock moves up to the tapes. Rob Cameron now lining up, so all the outfits in line. Starter looks as if he's reasonably happy. The revs start to go up. Well, the noise gets louder, so in any moment we'll see the tapes will go, but uh, well, John Blewett didn't look very happy then. He put his hand up, but he puts it quickly down again, and we get underway, and Gary Jackson equally has made a very good start into that top corner. Gary Jackson again, Lee's going into that first bend. Rob Cameron has moved up into second. Jerry Adams is holding third. Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams are setting up cracking pace going into that bottom bend. Rob Cameron and Steve Smith still there in second. Jerry Adams and Sean Pitt are closing in third spot at the moment, but Ivan Matthews is starting to close on them. Oh, no room for mistakes at all in that third spot as Ivan Matthews is right on the back wheel of Jerry Adams. The gap starting to open because Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams really do look as if they're starting to get things sorted out. Oh, you might remember. He's made up his mind where he wants to be on the start line. <laughs> Simon Wigg and uh, Mark Loram side by side on the far side there. Joe Screen on uh, contending to come over to the inside of the circuit. Right on the inside, Joe Screen. And uh, I don't think from here we can see where Jeremy's gone. And, uh, Jeremy Doncaster in the middle, Steve Schofield alongside, uh, and, uh, alongside Steve Schofield, and Jeremy Doncaster's alongside Joe Screen. So then, here we have it, the major grass track championship of the year goes down the line with only two points separating the first two and a further two points taking us to the third place now with Mark Lauren, Simon Wig and Joe Screen still there. Still back. Wiggy makes a good start but past him goes Jeremy Doncaster and Jeremy Doncaster's out in front. Thank 
234 slash and then Trevor Banks and then Simon Wigg. Well, what a race. That has complicated things no end. Well, we can say that Jeremy Doncaster has 86 because he's just scored 10 points. Congratulations on a very powerful 
competition. <laughs> okay, I know this is the first time you finished uh, off of first place in the Masters, I think, when you completed. I think you generally won it if you've been there, haven't you? <laughs> we look forward to that time. Ladies and gentlemen, third place, by the way. This is going to present in second place. We all love to see him going well. Jerry Doncaster. You came here in the right kind of mind, I think, didn't you? You were uh, having a real cry right then. Yeah, I think uh, I, was, I was sort of just totally staggered about it, and he just about waved himself up because uh, no, no one else can understand me, and uh, yeah, and uh, I can't even understand myself. But uh, what he's saying is simply true. I think uh, I'm in a better frame of mind if I don't have to like, just get on with the business, and away we go. It certainly worked today, and as I say, it really was a close competition. Yeah, it's a tough day for racing, and um, I mean, fair play to everyone. You know, everybody rode extremely well, and uh, it's a fair race. Well done, Dean. Well done, Jeremy Doncaster. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we can only have one winner at the end of the day. A new name on the British Masters Trophy. Mark Lauren. Just like right now, everybody tells you what to do. Mark, yeah, one of those is yours, definitely. Congratulations, it must be absolutely delightful. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased to see you've done pretty good for me, so um, I, I really wanted to win this one, but it's been a little bit of a week, and I'm really excited to see you guys have a little bit together, but it's been a little bit of a problem, and it's been a little bit of a problem. You seem to go particularly well down here at Tunbridge, I think. This is John, the wife of our major sponsor today, John Engineering. 
Well, there's other children in the team, so take the same format, take the guys across here and have a word with uh, Steve. It was hard, Steve, you had a bit of a deficit, deficit, I won't even try and say that word again, I know there's something... Well, <laughs> and the mic's going on here as well, this is good, isn't it? But Steve, you were uh, with Roger last year, had a very hard time in the competition last year, it wasn't really last year, you must have had a bit more confidence this year. I thought that push it. After the last round, they thought you could yeah. What did you do with all the crowd here that were behind you? And, uh, well, you must have uh, felt a bit sorry to see that Richard went away from you in that final. Well, I reckon he's been doing well lately. Yeah, I've been with Fred. Here we go, Steve. I leave it. You get him back. And Roger, I've got to have a quick word with you because you know it's going to panic next season. The first round couldn't really have been any more disastrous. You managed to get a lot of points, but then we all heard about people picking up bits and pieces of that engine off the track. But this engine went well for you? Yeah, it went very well. Happy one. I wouldn't know who owns the engine because there's that many borrowed bits in it. But I, I must say that Richard Piggott is a very quick, very quick thinking, very agile, very good driver. He deserves to be in today. And there was just nothing else to do to stop him. So, unfortunately, because Richard's won, we've got to carry on for another couple of years. <laughs> Sort of problems I'm stuck with now that nobody out there can hear you, and of course that is true, it was the wrong choice of tyre. 
But all I can say is I don't think we're going to push it to too many words now. We'll move away because I said the 1991 champion.